If you're like 99% of America, then you're watching me do something right now that you never do, and that's read comics. You people are the ones I want to talk to, because my goal is to get you to dig comics. Dig comics, dig comics. It's October 2010, and we're looking at yet another year of rising box office sales, spurred by movie properties based on comics, titles like Kick-Ass, and Iron Man, and Scott Pilgrim. Meanwhile, comic sales are down 20%. Hollywood knows where to find all the good stories, yet America doesn't seem to. What can we do about that? Comics have always been a huge force in our culture from day one, and yet we have a history of treating it like trash here in this country. They are a unique combination of words and pictures, which is the ultimate way to communicate. I mean, if one picture's worth a thousand words, and then you add the words too, you're communicating perfectly. Comics can be anything you want them to be. Drama, crime, history, comedy, weirdness, anything you want. So how am I gonna get you to dig comics? Now, I've got some ideas of my own, but I could use some help. I went to the legendary San Diego Comic Con, the largest domestic gathering of great comic art and comics professionals. I sat down with some of these folks to see what ideas they had for expanding comics audience. To anybody who's sitting here watching this who's already interested in comics and wants to be part of getting other people engaged in comics, what do you say to them? What do you do? Well, I would say we're in a real renaissance when it comes to comics today. Some of the most vital work being done today is being done by cartoonists. The people that are creating comics today are some of the most intelligent and talented people that have ever created comics. And guys like me owe it to them to try and do everything we can to get other people to believe in what I believe in, and I believe in comics. The quality and variety of comics art happening right under your nose is astounding. From Ohio to Los Angeles, from Oregon to Brooklyn, from Canada to Japan to France and beyond, so how are we going to get all of these great stories and art from all of these places to your central nervous system? Ever since I was 10 years old, I have this thing that I've done. I just call it random acts of comics. I leave comics everywhere. When I go to lunch, I'll take a stack of books with me, hardcovers. I'll just pass them out. We did some experiments with some Marvel comics about five years ago where we gave them away for free four days before they were released into comic shops. Sales went up, not down. Find a graphic novel that you think they will like. Lend it to them. Give them to them. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Give it away, I love giving comics away. It's a job of all us believers to turn you non-believers on to some sequential soul food. Let me show you how it's done. We're here at Comic-Con with my good buddy Tyler, Tyler Miller and his family, Carrie Miller, his daughter and a little sleeping baby underneath. So Carrie, please tell me, what is it that brought you here to the San Diego Comic-Con? My husband. Is your husband into comic books? Uh, yes, he is. Okay, are you into comic books? No, I'm not. I don't really like to read books with pictures unless I'm reading them to my kids, so it's okay. not really my thing. So you have been dragged down here virtually against your will. Pretty much. <laughs> I'd like to do a little experiment. I want to take you comic shopping. I think I'm going to find some comics that you're going to like. Does that sound all right to you? That sounds good. All right, terrific. Let's go buy some comics! <laughs> the great Carol Tyler did a book called You'll Never Know. This is a true-to-life memoir about how she's trying to talk to her father about his experiences in World War II, but he just can't talk about them. And it's very hard for her to reach him. It's an autobiographical book. It's gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. Please open it up and have a look. Could you get into this? I would say it's more visually appealing to me than Spider-Man or <laughs> comic book hero kind of comics. We're going to buy you a copy of Carol Tyler's wonderful book, You'll Never Know, and that'll be your present for helping us out, okay? Okay. All right, so we're going to find out if I can get Carrie Miller to dig comics. We'll check in on Carrie later. Now, I can't be the only guy telling her to dig comics. Luckily, there's other ways to spread the word. USA Today just did a special on Comic-Con. Right in the middle of the page, in their section, they had the four comics that you need to read at this show. Anybody can see for themselves wow, this really is different, or, you know, this is great art. This is something I can read even though I know nothing about comics. I know you guys are no dopes. I know that you see comic books in the news. The trouble is, comics don't know how to find you. Behold, the comic book store. While America could be digging comics in a place like this, most people don't.
Why is that? They're not that easy to get to. The system of this, this comic book store where you could go get your comics that you collected in perfect condition focused in on the fetishness of our collecting habits. To a large degree, we're making the wrong product. If we're trying to go after kids who traditionally were the people who, who are reading comic books in a big way, it's tough to sell them on part 48 of a 96 part story. If you go to the average comic book store, it's this little dinky crowded place and girls and women are repelled. They get maybe as far as the entry and they sniff the air and it smells like gym socks and they don't go any further. But they go to bookstores. They go to bookstores. That's right, bookstores. I'm sure you've seen the graphic novel section at Borders. Could this be part of the answer? Well, our sales, you know, 70% of them are outside of the comics market. Barnes & Noble, uh, you know, Amazon. Uh... So your business model, it's just, it's really going to the book market. That's... Almost almost entirely. That may be true, but a huge portion of that that's fueling that growth were the shoujo books bought by teenage girls. So of course it's growth because you're bringing in new readers. Right, half the population. The women are some of the largest book reading audience. Young girls read the most. I think they're just starting to realize that there's a lot of stories that they would enjoy in this medium just as much as they enjoy fantasy or other books. You hear that, ladies? Comics aren't just testosterone-fueled fantasies for boys. And here's one great idea that can help bridge the gap between female book readers and female comic book readers. Janet Ivanovich sold 150 million novels. She has a loyal following that are very interested in anything she writes. Well, she did the Metro Girls series, that's a prose book, and then she took the third book in the series and made it a graphic novel. It will not be a prose book. It's just a graphic novel. So these readers that have been prose readers now, if they want to continue, will continue in graphic novel format, which I think was a very bold move for a best-selling author to do. I don't think it's happened before. Sounds like there's a whole bunch of lucky ladies about to discover a whole new world. And speaking of ladies, let's check in on Carrie Miller. Did we get her to dig comics? I was pleasantly surprised. I kind of got caught up in the characters and the storyline, so I am interested in reading the second one. Oh, okay, well, that's funny. Let's, let's see if we can do anything about that. Why don't you follow me? You've read the artwork. I'd like you now to meet the artist. Carol Tyler, this is Carrie Miller. Carrie is your newest fan. I really enjoyed your book. <laughs> I'm not really a comic book person, but I really enjoyed reading your memoir. Did you have it like an emotional connect? Absolutely. I'm very drawn into the family dynamics. Striking that universal chord was one of the things I wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I was talking about it yesterday, and one of my aunts said, oh, I would be really interested in reading that book. She was really interested in the subject matter, so I actually plan to lend it to her so she can read it. It starts conversations in families. Yeah. And that's the thing, Carol. You've done something universal with universal appeal, and again, I thank you for your work. Carrie, I truly hope that this is the beginning of a journey of discovery. I'm very uh, grateful that you gave me, gave Carol, gave comics that chance. Well, I can't believe it, but I actually got an average wife and mother to dig comics. But that's not good enough for me. I want to convince Carrie that comics are good for her kids, too. Meet Anastasia Betts. Her job is to educate teachers on how to use comic books in the classroom as a teaching tool. The vast majority of educators are realizing the power of the storytelling and the ways in which comics pull the reader in and engage the student and want to harness that power for teaching their students about how to tell stories. Librarians have become a tremendous champion for comics in general. The understanding that comics are a great way to get kids to read. Even when I was in high school, I would finish my assignments and I'd sit in the back of the room and I'd read comics and that didn't go over well because I was told, you know, why do you waste your time reading that junk? And it really pissed me off and Miss Smarty Pants know it all had went through her comics and underlined in pen all the vocabulary words that I learned from comics that I never learned in their class. If you can give a kid a comic book, he'll read it. Kids love comics. And kids love superheroes more than anybody. I mean, every kid loves Batman. I remember being a kid and, some, and, and struggling a little bit in school and I'm sitting here wondering, you know, if, uh, if all those comics I was reading didn't maybe do a little something for me that maybe I wouldn't have otherwise have gotten. Um, the human brain 
processes visual 60,000 times faster than we process text. So the beautiful thing about that is that you can teach a kindergartner who doesn't read about story structure, the idea that things happen in a sequence. And it also is great for activating the oral language skills of a kindergartner because if you give them the book and you ask them to tell the story, they're using language to tell the story that they're reading. So it's a perfect tool for uh, generating language. What else do you guys need to hear? Comic books aren't just fun, they're good for your brain. I'm not giving up, America. I'm gonna be hitting the streets and bringing the word to you. Come with me, America. Come with me and dig comics.